May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Blessed be the king who comes in the name of the Lord, they call out. I imagine this scene. I can see dust rising from all those people traveling the road to see him. Today we too wave palms, though we do it because we call this Palm Sunday and we honor what happened so long ago. They did it to soften the way, to honor the one who was coming, riding on a colt. They tore branches from trees and some, maybe unable to reach, pulled off their coats, tunics, and lay them out for the procession. The passion was contagious. Patchwork of joyful color from palm branches, cloaks, and shawls, tunics settled on the path before him. Hope for what his coming would mean. We honor this day knowing it was important enough that all four Gospels include this event. Our palms are a reminder of that day, asking us to imaginatively project ourselves into it and join this noisy Hosanna singing crowd that day on the road to Jerusalem. We would spread ours out before him too, wouldn't we, if we had been there. A day ripe with hope and passion draws us in. We get to be swept up into his journey entering Jerusalem. We get to sing the Hosannas and call out, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. As I think about being there that day, I know there must have been both courage and fear, anticipation and some dread. Palms in hand, we wonder, are we ready to walk with him into whatever lies ahead? That's what these palms are about. Now, I know most years, a lot of the palms go home with you. If you're like me, they'll be tucked into the edge of a picture frame near my door, maybe in another place at your home where you'll see them, where you pray. They will dry up, they'll turn a bleached, pale yellow gold, and then perhaps eventually slip down out of their impromptu place. Some of you will make palm crosses, reaching back each year to remember how does that fold go? These crosses turn up on nightstands, in your Bible or prayer book, in a mirror's frame. We eventually toss them into the yard or compost and let go of these Palm Sunday images until next year. I want you to look at your palm right now. If you don't have one, raise your hand and our greeter will bring the basket. Touch the cool green, fading to yellow. Feel the long fibers making ridges. Smell it now. It's faint, but it's the only thing that smells like this, like Palm Sunday. Hold on to this palm this year because it's more than a leafy frond passed out with your bulletin. It's more than a sort of liturgical corsage. Today, it's rather like a passport. If you were worshiping with St. Michael's last year, you likely received one of these palms in a Holy Week bag or came to pick them up here where we took video of people as they waved them these newly received palms and then Jason strung them all together to create a palm procession online. The year before that, 
We sent pieces of them out in the mail to people along with an Easter card to open later. This year, St. Michael's takes indescribable joy at being in person together. Once an assumption, it now feels like great luxury. We are also much blessed by many of you who are able to join us from home, if not in person, and we are grateful. We miss terribly those not physically here today, but we're glad when you can join us this way too. For two years, absence has been a cautious decision we've all had to weigh and make. Today, that's changing. It has changed a great deal. And except for those especially vulnerable, most people are choosing now whether to go out or not. No longer bound by mandates. Newly vaccinated. Today, these palms are a symbol of our stepping out to that road to honor Christ as our king who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, when we had to do it from home, we did so. When we had to do it outside in twos, unable to gather, we did so. Now we are able to gather in his name in person, in joy and passion, even knowing there is always some risk in going out into the world. Our palms, sort of spiritual passport, if you will, are stamped with courage and joy, passion, as we enter Jesus' final journey into Jerusalem. The disciples and others on the road that day could not know exactly what was coming, but they came in hope. Scholars say they hoped Jesus would be their triumphant king, leading them, saving them, bringing peace, not just in heaven, but on earth. I think they probably held hope, and I think they also feared what lay ahead or what might happen. Today, I doubt there is anyone within the sound of my voice in person or online who has not been praying for peace in the world. As we hear of what suffering is happening. Who has not felt the anguish of those suffering at the hands of tyrants and those they enlist to carry out their insatiable quest for power and dominance? If Jesus were coming today, and we were out on Darst or Second, cheering him on, waving our palms and throwing down our coats, my prayer would be for God's peace. And yet we do struggle to hold it in ourselves, within ourselves. We struggle with it between nations and neighbors, and even within families. We have not accomplished it on our own in this world, as, and I don't believe we can do that alone as the world stands now or ever. But I know there is peace in the kingdom of God, and that's what we are working for. We get to be agents of that peace. We evangelize that peace, learning the way by choosing to step forth and follow our Lord into Jerusalem by choosing to be present with him as we read this morning of his arrest, conviction, of his trudging up that hill laden with the cross, by witnessing his willingness to die, and then to know he overcomes death itself, not just his own, but for us. That knowledge, that belief is what can bring us to the place of deep peace, when chaos is all around and devastation abounds. That is our great Palm Sunday hope. That such a peace is possible, even while the evidence around us appears to prove otherwise. 
We hold palms today as a symbol of our stepping out of the safety of our homes, of our carefully built distractions, and into that place of hope and vulnerability where the Prince of Peace reigns, where nations step back from horrific acts before taking those actions that cannot be stepped back from. Take your palm with you when you go home today and put it near your door. Think of it as that passport reminding you, a sign of our way to the kingdom of God, of following this unlikely, unarmed, uncrowned king all the way. It will be stamped with our small acts, our prayers for peace, with the love and humble vulnerability of obeying Jesus' Maundy Thursday mandate to wash each other's feet, to share in his body and blood in the breaking of bread, to stay awake, to stand witness to Good Friday's Stations of the Cross, even as it pains us. A long time ago, I read Someone who said, despair and hope travel the road to Jerusalem together and on every path we take. Our Lord knows this well and enters anyway, calling us to join, to walk in his light, ready to take our hand to be present when despair hits us, ready to rejoice and dance when hope illumines our stride. He comes towards us because for us, he has gone to hell and back and vanquished death itself. Jesus' riding into Jerusalem was not accidental or unplanned as we heard this morning. He enters as a king might enter his city. Old Testament prophecies are fulfilled and he no longer admonishes them to tell no one or to keep his identity quiet. Jesus is finally outing himself as the long-awaited Messiah. When he would not be the kind of Messiah they wanted, the people turned on him, going from Hosanna to crucify him, crucify him in short time. Instead of being their hero who conquers oppressors by force, he brings unending mercy, boundless love, and spirit's grace. He doesn't march in with an army to vanquish combatant nations and tyrants. Rather, he enters into the hearts and minds of those willing to hear him, to follow him, to be healed. This is the true triumphal entry into us who he came for, into the very marrow of our beings and transforming us with his love, calling on us to be missionaries of peace, serving where there is need, loving the unlovable. In this way, his reign in us becomes his reign through us. Amen.